Fuck more, more, more. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so here's what we'll do. I vote we're gonna yes. pretend to end the show here. Like we're gonna do our outro. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna do an intro and we're so that way we can still keep this last chapter as the episode for next week. Yes. Okay? So we're gonna pretend, okay? We're gonna do it just for You guys for... know how to pretend, right? Right. We're going to do this one just for you. I just, just said it right this now. This is exclusive for the people that are <laughs> hanging out with us. Okay? <laughs> we have to finish it. I didn't realize how long, how yeah. short that chapter Everyone be cool. Everyone be Everyone cool. be fucking cool. Okay? Everyone <laughs> calm the fuck down. <laughs> Wait, now I'm going to eat some fries. Yeah, eat some fries while I do, uh, I do the outro. Hey, Tara, don't eat the fry yet. All right. You get your, you get enough fries in you? Yeah. You ready for the next the next go? Yeah. Alright, we're gonna start it. We're gonna start it like it's a new episode. Hello friends and welcome to Coach by Tara, the podcast where Tara Hi, that's me. Coaches <laughs> me, my I Mike, on things that I don't know about, like Twilight. Last episode we did chapter twenty two and twenty three. Live. Chapter twenty three being the angel, chapter twenty two being hide and seek. And we are, are now doing for... chapter twenty four, which is a name I don't know. What is the name of the chapter? Chapter twenty four, an impasse. An an impasse. Impasse. Mm, an impasse. An impasse. Uh, I'm gonna recap last the last two chapters real quick because that's not gonna be that hard. No. So basically, Bella escapes uh, Jasper and Alice at the airport. Yes. Through going through a bathroom with two entrances, mm -hmm. gets. Gets in a, a shuttle to the Hyatt, gets in a taxi to where she's from, mm -hmm. gets to her house, mm -hmm. finds a phone number, <laughs> calls the number. It's James. He goes, yo, come. <laughs> this is so like, you're so like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I, I, I got a lot to, I got a lot to go through. Yeah. Go, goes to, uh, he says, Hey, go to the ballet studio that you used to go to. She shows up. You find out that he didn't even have her mom. He just played a home video of her saying, Bella, Bella, Bella. So she doesn't, her mom's still in Florida, so she's fine. Then James talks a bunch of stuff about, I wish you would told Edward to come after me. I want to fight his ass. I want to kill him. You know, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to, I'm recording this. I'm putting this on my, on Facebook live. I'm recording this. <laughs> yeah, you, live streaming this on Twitch. I'm, I'm live streaming this on Twitch. I'm going to suck all your blood out. And then she tries to run. He beats her up, throws her into the walls, breaks some mirrors. Her head cracks open. Her leg gets broken. And then she passes out and that's the first chapter the second chapter we went through is even shorter and it just basically goes over how she's feeling during injuries suddenly edward as an angel is there to her mm -hmm. and well she thinks she's freaking dead she thinks so. she's dead but she's not but carlisle's there and alice is there and they start caring for her and she she ha feels like her hands burning and as she feels like her hands burning uh they tell edward you gotta suck out the venom so edward instead of peeing, you gotta instead do of peeing it. on her sucks out the venom Instead of being and her. and then the burning goes away and then they leave the area and she's mentioned smelling gasoline which to me means they they're gonna light that bitch on fire to kind of get rid of maybe James's remains that's just a guess on my part that wasn't actually part of the chapter um but yeah that's that's chapter twenty two and twenty three that was a quick recap chapter twenty four called what was it again an impasse an impasse an impasse it's exciting Tara. an an impasse I can't say it an Tara. Oh, sorry. To, to, I keep saying it. <laughs> an impasse. We're at an impasse right now. Uh, are you ready to coach me? Yes, I am. All right, let's do it. Mike? Yes? Are you ready to be coached oh, I'm now? Sorry. Co coach me, mama. <laughs> coach me. An impasse. An, 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 an impasse. Why can't you say that? <laughs> I'm an impasse. An, 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 an impasse. An impasse. <laughs> My eyes open to a bright white light. I was on... It, I can't even speak anymore at all. It's over. I guess I. Oh, sorry, guys. Tara can't. Yeah, speak we're not actually it. doing it. So yeah. no, I'm just kidding. That would be so fucked up if we did that. I know. Yeah, we'll do another one. Ah, just kidding, guys. See you later. See ya. See you never. I was in an unfamiliar room, a white room. The wall beside me was covered in long vertical blinds. Over my head, the glaring lights blinded me. I was propped up on a hard, uneven bed, a bed with rails. There was an annoying. Was the bed cold? <laughs> yeah. There was an annoying beeping sound somewhere close by. I hoped that it meant I was alive. Death shouldn't be this uncomfortable. My hands were all twisted up with clear tubes, and something was taped across my face, and I lifted my hand to rip it off. No, you don't. And cool fingers caught my hand. Edward? I turned my head slightly, and his exquisite face was just inches from mine, his chin resting on the edge of my pillow. 
I realized again that I was alive, this time with gla gratitude and elation. Oh, Edward, I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. Are you really sorry, though? <laughs> yeah, Bill, are you really, though? Shh, he shushed me. Everything's all right now. What happened? I couldn't remember clearly, and my re mind rebelled against me. I was almost too late. I could have been too late, he whispered. I was so stupid, Edward. I thought he had my mom. He tricked us all. I need to call Charlie and my mom, I realized through the haze. Alice called them. Renee is here. Well, here in the hospital. She's getting something to eat right now. She's here? I tried to sit up, but the spinning in my head accelerated and his hand pushed me gently down onto the pillows. She'll be back soon, he promised, and you need to stay still. But what did you tell her? I panicked. I had no interest in being soothed. My mom was here and I was recovering from a vampire attack. Why did you tell her I'm here? Bella, you fell down two flights of stairs and through a window, he paused. You have to admit it could happen. <laughs> I sighed and it hurt. I stared down at my body under the sheet, the huge lump that was my le leg. How bad am I? I asked. Zombie man. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for the host. We appreciate it. Thank you. You my have man. You have a broken leg, four broken ribs, cracks in your skull, bruises covering nearly every inch of your skin, and you've lost a lot of blood. They gave you a few transfusions. I didn't like it. It made you smell all wrong for a while. That must have been a nice change for you. No, I like how you smell. <laughs> Kind of weird, but whatever. Uh, that's a weird... Just vampire things, am weird, I right? Just vampire humor there. <laughs> Some weird vampire humor. How did you do it? I asked quietly. He knew what I meant at once. I'm not sure. He looked away from my wondering eyes, lifting my gauze-wrapped gauze hand from the bed and holding it gently in his, trying to not disrupt the wire connecting me to the monitors. It was impossible to stop, he whispered. Impossible, but I did. I must love you. <laughs> he looked up finally with a half smile. Don't I taste as good as I smell? I smiled in response. That hurt my face. Even better. Better than I'd imagined. I'm sorry, I apologized. He raised his eyes to the ceiling. Of all the things to apologize for. <laughs> what should I apologize for? For ne very nearly taking yourself away from me forever. I'm sorry, I apologized again. I know why you did it, his voice was comforting. It was still irrational, though, of course. You should have waited for me. You should have told me. You wouldn't have let me go. No, he agreed in a grim tone. I wouldn't. <laughs> so he's like, damn it, she was right. Smart. <laughs> yep, it's very smart. Some very unpleasant memories started to come back to her. She was like, oh, crap, I'm remembering some of this crap that happened to me. Right. And he's like, okay, what's wrong? And she's like, okay, I need to know what happened to James, right? Right. What happened? What happened Everyone... to James? My favorite character. <laughs> Your favorite character? Jimmy. The J Jimmy the Vampire. Jimmy the Vampire. All my homies hate Jimmy the Vampire, in the words of Tyler Tyler. Mm, yeah. I don't like him. Yeah. Me neither. You said I was, your favorite character. I was character. kidding. Mm. I was being facetious. Who's your favorite character? I like Carlisle. You like Carlisle? I like Carlisle. He's Zaddy. Zaddy Carlisle. Zaddy Carlisle. He's probably my favorite. He's great. I like Alice, too. Alice is cool. Alice is cool. Oh, yeah. So he says, Bella, what's wrong? What happened to James? After I pulled him off of you, Emmett and Jasper took care of him. There was a fierce note of regret in his voice. This confused me. I didn't even see Emmett and Jasper there. They had to leave the room. There was a lot of blood. But you stayed. Yes, I stayed. <laughs> Zaddy. <laughs> and Alice in Carlisle, I said in wonder. They love you too, you know. A flash of painful images from the last time I'd seen Alice reminded me of something. Did Alice see the tape? I asked anxiously. Yes. A new sound darkened his voice. A tone of sheer hatred. She was always in the dark. That's why she didn't remember. I know. She understands now. His voice was even, but his face was black with fury. Do you understand what I'm, I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like she was in a freaking insane, insane asylum in a room, a dark room all the time. Right. So she doesn't remember her past because it is dark. Right. 
Was Which is out. freaking awful. And like she was, you know, given shock therapy and all this stuff as a right because it was it was at a time where they didn't quite understand mental health and mm-hmm. if someone sees visions they mm-hmm. think they're i mean it's it's a it's above burning them at the stake for being a witch but yeah. it's not not my much mm-hmm. yeah like yeah so hard so she had that power before she became a vampire what the visions yeah well yeah but it was just mental illness and in, in, in human so she didn't really have visions then, but then it manifested itself when she became a vampire. I, I'm thinking that's a kind of what it was because, and I, did they didn't explain that he, they didn't explain how their, how their powers work yet. I mean, they, we talked about it, but I don't think he said why they have them. Well, I think like, and I think it, maybe it's talked about more in one of the upcoming books, but like their theory, cause obviously you can't really test it really. Right. <laughs> Is that like your strongest trait or strongest thing from your human life is what you take with oh, you as your they power didn't say that. if you have it. So like if you think about it, like if Alice wasn't okay and had you know Edward said before he turned, he always had a feeling that he knew what people Yeah, like he had really good intuition. Food. Like he had really good intuition yeah, as I, a human. Yeah, I seem to remember that now. That was a long Whereas time ago. Whereas, you know, I, I know, it feels like a long time ago. And like, you know, with Alice, like if she was having, oh, hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. <laughs> um, if she was having, like, you know, if she I was schizo, like, you know, having hallucinations, if she was like a mental. I guess mental. I didn't think of it in the way where like she would have like, she would think she was having visions and they weren't true. And then that would manifest itself until she was actually having it. But I, Hey, it's, I, I don't know. That's how I always thought of it. Yeah. Is no, like it maybe makes sense. it makes sense. Maybe it's because she actually did have like mental issues, but right. they ended up being something even crazier and different. When I she thought was they were vampire. implying that she could see things before. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. That'd be too fantastical for this vampire book. I think. Yeah. They're trying to make it more realistic. Come yeah, on. My bad. Anyways, my bad. So then she's like, she f- sees the IV in her hand and she's like, ugh. And he's like, what's wrong? And she's like, it's just like, ugh, needles, you know? Mm-hmm. He's like, dang, afraid of a needle. But a, a sadistic vampire intent on torturing her to death? Sure, no problem. She runs off to meet him. But an IV on the other hand. Don't want to see an IV. No, don't want to do that. All my hate IVs. <laughs> All my homies hate IVs. They do. <laughs> Um, why are you here? I asked. He stared at me, confused, hurt, touching his eyes. Do you want me to leave? No, I protested, horrified by the thought. No, I meant, why does my mother think you're here? I need to have my story straight before she gets back. Because remember, there's a whole plan sent to place where right. she left for, you know, like, and she left messages with everybody. It feels like. <laughs> oh, he said, and his forehead smoothed back into marble. I came to Phoenix to talk some sense into you, to convince you to come back to Forks. His wide eyes were so earnest and sincere, I almost believed him myself. You agreed to see me, and you drove out to the hotel where I was staying with Carlisle and Alice. Of course, I was here here with parental supervision. He inserted virtuously, because, you know, he's a teenager too. Right, right. (laughs) He's not a hundred years old. Right. But you tripped on the stairs on the way to my room, and well you know the rest you don't need to remember any details though you have a good excuse to be a little muddled about the finer points i thought about it for a moment there are a few flaws with that story like no broken windows not really he said alice had a little bit too much fun fabricating evidence it's all been taken care of very convincingly you could probably sue the hotel if you wanted to you have nothing to worry about he promised stroking my cheek with the lightest of touches your only job now is to heal. So he's, she's like, damn. I would be like, damn, I'm going to sue him. I'm going to get some money. You know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sounds like she's pretty taken care of in the yeah, vampire family. I think so, so too. <laughs> it says, I wasn't so lost to the soreness or the fog of medication that I didn't respond to his touch. The beeping of the monitor jumped around erratically. Now he wasn't the only one who could hear my heart misbehave in front of him. That's going to be embarrassing, I muttered to myself. <laughs> Hmm, I wonder. He leaned in slowly. The beeping noise accelerated wildly before his lips even touched me. But when they did, though that with the most gentle of pressure, the beeping stopped altogether. 
He pulled back abruptly, his anxious expression turning to relief as the monitor re reported the restarting of my heart. It seems that I'm going to have to be even more careful with you than usual. I was not finished kissing you, I complained. Don't make me come over there. He grinned and bent his to press his lips lightly to mine. The monitor went wild, and then his lips were taut. He pulled away. I think I hear your mother. <laughs> I like the flame the fire emojis. <laughs> Don't leave me, I cried. I won't. I'll take a nap, he says. He's not napping. He doesn't sleep. Yeah, he doesn't sleep. <laughs> So then, you know, he fake sleeps and she's like, don't forget to breathe. Like, look like you're breathing because he does like he would he just sit there like either. a stone. Otherwise, right. Like a statue getting spicy for sure. And then she could hear her mom from the hallway and, you know, she, she hasn't seen her mom. So she's super relieved to see her mom. Um, and she's like, dang, like he never leaves you, does he? She notices Edward's still in there. And he's like, she's like, well, mom, I'm so glad to see you. Like, just distracting. And she, like, her mom's all upset, like, because Renee is very big emotions. I think I kind of explained her yep. to you a little bit at the beginning, but, like, very big emotions. And she says, I'm just so glad to finally see your eyes open. I suddenly realized I didn't have any idea when it was. How long have they been closed? It's Friday, hon. You've been out for a while. Friday? I was shocked. I tried to remember what day it had been, but I didn't even want to think about that. They had to keep you sedated for a while, honey. You've got a lot of injuries. I know, I could feel them. <laughs> You're lucky Dr. Cullen was there. He's such a nice man. Very young, though, and he looks like more like a model than a doctor. <laughs> you, met <Zaddy>. Car <laughs> you met Carlisle? And Edward's sister, Alice. She's a lovely girl. She is, I agreed wholeheartedly. She glanced over her shoulder at Edward, lying with his eyes closed in the chair. You didn't tell me you had such good friends and forks. I cringed and then moaned. What hurts? She demanded anxiously, turning back to me. Edward's eyes flashed to my face. It's fine. I just have to remember not to move. He lapsed back into his phony slumber. <laughs> then she asks where Phil is, and she's like, oh, like... You know, he's still in Florida, but you're never about, you're never going to guess. Like, we're, we're, we're not going to leave Florida. He just signed. Like, he just signed to Jacksonville. Phil. Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate I think baseball the player. Yes. You like Phil too, don't you? I love Phil. Phil likes Lincoln Park. Right. I was going to say. Me and Phil are tight. He's a, he's a professional baseball player and he likes Lincoln Park. <laughs> what more could you want from Phil? Right, exactly. And she's, how old is Phil supposed to be? I think he's supposed to be younger than Charlie if I Yeah, him. because like Bella's a teenager. So I'd say like So Renee's probably at youngest her late thirties. At youngest. Yeah. Like so, absolute youngest. And I think Phil's like in his early thirties. Okay. So she's like she's cougar in a little bit. She's cougar in a little bit. Because she's probably more likely in her early forties. I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say he's probably like, if I had to guess, which I'm probably not very good at guessing, he's like, he's like 33 and she's like so 40. Yeah. So you, you, you're down with him because he's you. I think they said how young her mom is in one of the books. Does he? I don't think MVPs. You mean VIPs, Jip? Yeah, you got you guys. That's part of being a VIP is you don't have to follow email only. <laughs> so she's like, oh, you'll like Jacksonville. Like, I was a little worried when they Phil ta started talking about getting signed in Akron. But like now we're going to be in, in Jacksonville and it's always sunny and the humidity isn't really that bad. Like, Akron. Ugh. Um, and she Imagine living in Ohio and they found I know. Right. God. Yeah. And they found like a house and she talks about that and. She's like, oh, my gosh, like you're going to like you're going to have your own bathroom. And she's like, wait a minute, mom, what are you talking about? I'm not going to Florida. I live in Forks. She's like, no, no, no. She's like, back up, back up. Well, but she was, was going to yeah. come there. She for, she's forgetting the whole yeah. story for her coming there. She says, but you don't have to anymore, silly. She laughed. Phil will be able to be around so much more now. We've talked about it a lot. And what I'm going to do is trade off on the away games half the time with you, half the time with him. She's like, Mom, 
I want you, I want to live in Forks. I'm already settled in at school and I have a couple of girlfriends. She glanced toward Edward again when I reminded her of friends. So I tried another direction and Charlie needs me. He's just all alone up there and he can't cook at all. <laughs> True. He just watches Skinamax. Yeah, oh, too day. much. I just but he doesn't even own it. the channel, so right. it's just the static. <laughs> you want to stay in Forks, she asked, bewildered. The idea was inconceivable to her. And then her eyes flickered back toward Edward. Why? I told you, school, Charlie. Her hands fluttered helplessly over to trying to find a place to safe place to pat. Like she was like, right. Bella, honey, you hate forks. She reminded me. It's not so bad. She frowned and looked back and forth between Edward and me, this time very deliberately. Is it this boy? She whispered. I opened my mouth to lie, but her eyes were scrutinizing my face, and I knew she would see through that. He's part of it, I admitted. No need to confess how big of a part. So have you had a chance to talk with Edward? Yes, and I want to talk to you about that. Uh Uh-oh. What about? I asked. I think that boy's in love with you, she accused, keeping her voice slow. I think so, too, I confided. And how do you feel about him? She very poorly concealed the raging curiosity in her voice. I sighed, looking away. As much as I loved my mom, this was not a conversation I wanted to have with her. I'm pretty crazy about him. There, that sounded like something a teenager with her first boyfriend might say. Well, he seems very nice, and my goodness, he's incredibly good-looking. But you're so young, Bella. Her voice was unsure. As far as I could remember, this was the first time since I was eight that she'd come close to trying to sound like a parental authority. I know that, Mom. Don't worry about it. It's just a crush, I soothed her. That's right, she agreed, easily pleased. And then she's, like, looking at a clock on the wall, and she's like, do you need to go? Like, oh, Mango said her mom's in her... Late thirties. Her I'm mom so, was nineteen when she gave birth to Bella. I'm thinking, okay. I'm thinking my man Phil is late twenties. No. I'm thinking my man Phil's late twenties, and here's why. Well, maybe early thirties. Because if he's having trouble getting signed by a ball club, that makes sense. But once you're thirty, you're kinda that you're you're early to mid twenties. No, I'd say your late thirties are the times where you don't have a chance in like major league. Like you've yeah. ruined your arm by the forties. It's, it's 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 lower than you think because there's every year there's a new class of like 20 18 19 20 year old dudes come and take your spot mm-hmm. i'm looking it up now you're looking up how old phil is yeah i think my man phil is like 29 so she's a cradle robber seems that way to me more power to her though you know what i mean that's so this is so weird it doesn't have it i mean it doesn't have it no because I don't know why it would, I guess, but if you're in your late thirties, you it has okay, biographical yeah. information. It says born in 1975, but no. it doesn't have a year where she's born. So I don't have a year to compare to. Wait, Phil was born in 1975. Yeah. This book takes place in what? 2000. Well, it was published in 2004. So, so that'd make him 29. Mm. <laughs> yes. 29, baby. Woo. Yes. Oh. <laughs> My man Phil. How old is Bella's mom? Let's go, Phil. Oh, 1968. So 2004 minus nine. I don't even know why I'm doing the math. That's only two years old. 36. 29 and 36. My man Phil. Damn it. I didn't know that. <laughs> Love to see it. Anyways, back to this. <laughs> da- damn. Damn. Well, wait. That's only seven years, right? It's not that bad. It's no. Only, it's only seven years. Mike and I are six years apart. Yeah. But I'm not six years older than you. I'm six years younger than you. Not that that matters. I'm just saying yeah, I'm not why, no why cougar. It if it's a man I'm not or a, a woman. cougar. I'm saying. <laughs> why does it matter, man or woman? Why? Why does that matter? It doesn't. It's sexist. But yeah, I knew she had Bella young because her and Charlie got married young. 
I burped a little bit. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay. Back to the back to the chapter. Thank you, everybody. For your <laughs> um, and so she's like, "Do you need to go?" And she's like, "Oh yeah, Phil's supposed to call. Like, I didn't know when you were gonna wake up." And she's like, "No problem, mom." Like, she's like, "I was so nervous. There's been some crime in the neighborhood, and I don't like being there alone." Crime? I asked in alarm, like, because she was like, "I haven't been saying." It. She said she hasn't been staying at. The home on her own. Like, right, you right. can go stay at home, you know. She was like, I've been too nervous to stay at home. She's like, crime. She said, well, someone broke into that dance studio around the corner from the house and it burned to the ground. There's nothing left at all. And they left a sto stolen car right out front. Do you remember when you used to dance there, honey? I remember. I shivered and winced. I can stay if you need me. No, mom, I'll be fine. Edward will be with me. I'll be back tonight, she says. She says, I love you, Mom. I love you too, Bella. Try to be more careful when you walk, honey. I don't want to lose you. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Edward's eyes stay closed, but a wide grin flashed across his face. <laughs> what? What? Fire emojis, the, the studio burnt down. <laughs> Gosh. Edward. Edward. <laughs> Are you feeling anxious? Your heart rate got a little high there. I'm fine. Oh, the, a nurse came in mm. so that she saw the heart rate go up from Edward. Edward. I'll tell your nurse that you're awake. She'll be in to see you in a minute. As, as soon as she closed the door, Edward was at my side. You stole a car? I raised my eyebrows. It was a good car. Very fast. <laughs> How was your nap? I asked. Interesting. His eyes narrowed. What? He looked down while he answered. I'm surprised. I thought Florida and your mother. Well, I thought that's what you would want. I stared at him uncomprehendingly. But you'd be stuck inside all day in Florida. You'd only be able to come out at night just like a real vampire. <laughs> he almost smiled, but not quite. And then his face was grave. I would stay in Forks, Bella. Or somewhere like it, he explained. Some place where I couldn't hurt you anymore. It didn't sink in at first. I continued to stare at him blankly as the words one by one clicked into my place in my head, into place in my head like a ghastly puzzle. I was barely conscious of the sound of my heart accelerating, though, as my breathing became hyperventilation. I was aware of the sharp aching in my protesting ribs. He didn't say anything. He watched my face warily as the pain that had nothing to do with broken bones, pain that was infinitely worse, threatened to crush me. And then another nurse walked purposefully into the room. Edward sat still as stone as he took in my expression with a practiced eye before turning to the monitors. Time for some more pain meds, sweetheart, she asked, tapping the IV feed. No, I tried keeping the agony out of my voice. I don't need anything. No need to be brave, honey. It's better if you don't get too stressed out. You need to rest. Okay, she said. Hit the call button when you're ready because she shakes her head. She's like, no, I don't want it. Staring at him blankly is very important in the movie, I hear. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen yeah. it. She gave Edward a stern look and threw one more glance at the machinery before leaving. His cool hands were on my face. I stared at him with wild eyes. Shh, Bella, calm down. Don't leave me, I begged in a broken voice. I won't, he promised. Now relax before I call the nurse back to sedate you. But my heart couldn't slow. Bella, he stroked my face anxiously. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be right here as long as you need me. Do you swear you won't leave me? I whispered. I tried to control the gasping, at least. My ribs were throbbing. He put his hands on either side of my face and brought his face close to mine. His eyes were wide and serious. I swear. The smell of his breath was soothing. It seemed to ease the ache of my breathing. He continued to hold my gaze while my body slowly relaxed and the beeping returned to normal. His eyes were dark, closer to black than gold today. Better, he asked. Yes, I said cautiously. So she got like, she needs X to give it to her. <laughs> but yeah, like she got scared because she was like, maybe I should just leave you alone. Right. Like, you know. Well, and here's the thing. What about the fucking girl vampire? Are they not worried about her at all? We'll get I, to that. <laughs> I, well, I just mean like, mm -hmm. if he was really like, "Yo, I'm not gonna go with you," like she's gonna want to kill Bella, right? Because they killed James. Wow, so, you're so intuitive. Maybe I you're just, like Edward. I just mean like, 
<laughs> that, to me, that's obvious. It's like, yeah, she's going to try to get revenge. Right. Someone going to die. Someone going to die. He shook his head and muttered something unintelligible. I thought I picked out the word overreaction. Why did you say that? I whispered, trying to keep my voice from shaking. Are you tired of having to save me all the time? Do you want me to go away? No, I don't want to be without you, Bella. Of course not. Be rational. And I have no problem with saving you either. If it weren't for the fact that I was the one putting you in danger, that I'm the reason that you're here. Yes, you are a reason. I f the reason I frowned. The reason why I'm here, alive. Barely, his voice was just a whisper, covered in gauze and plaster and hardly able to move. I wasn't referring to my most recent near-death experience, I said, growing irritated. I was thinking of others. You could take your pick. If it weren't for you, I would be rotting away in the Forks Cemetery. He winced at my words, but the haunted look didn't leave his eyes. That's not the worst part, though, he continued to whisper. He acted as if he hadn't spoken. Not seeing you there on the floor, crumpled and broken, his voice was choked. Not thinking I was too late. Not even hearing you scream in pain. All those unbearable memories that I'll carry with me for the rest of eternity. No. The very worst feeling, knowing that I couldn't stop, believing that I was going to kill you myself. But you didn't. I could have. So easily. I knew I needed to stay calm, but he was trying to talk himself into leaving me, and the panic fluttered in my lungs, trying to get out. Promise me, I whispered. What? You know what? I was starting to get angry now. He was so stubbornly determined to dwell on the negative. He heard the change in my tone. I don't seem to be strong enough to stay away from you, so I suppose that you'll get your way, whether it kills you or not, he added roughly. Good, he hadn't promised, though, a fact that I had not missed. The panic was only barely contained. I had no strength left to control the anger. You told me how you stopped. Now I want to know why, I demanded. Why, he repeated warily. Why you did it? Why didn't you just let the venom spread? By now I would be just like you. True. Good question, am I right? True, Good Bella. question. True. <clears throat> Edward's eyes seemed to turn flat black then, and I remembered that this was something he'd never intended me to know. Alice must have been preoccupied by the things she'd learned about herself, or she'd been very careful with her thoughts around him. Clearly, he had had no idea that she'd filled me in on the mechanics of vampire conversions. He was surprised and infuriated. His nostrils flared. His mouth looked as if he was, ch if it was chiseled from stone. He wasn't going to answer. That much was clear. I'll be the first to admit that I have no experience with relationships, I said, but it just seems logical. A man and a woman have to be somewhat equal, as in one of them can't always be swooping in and saving the other one. They have to save each other equally. He folded his arms on the side of my bed and rested his chin on my arms. I'd hoped I'd get a chance to warn Alice before he caught up with her. You have saved me, he said quietly. I can't always be Lois Lane, I insisted. I want to be Superman, too, <laughs> she said. She really wants to be a freaking vampire. I guess so. <laughs> you don't even know what you're asking. His voice was soft. I think I do. Bella, you don't know. I've had almost 90 years to think about this, and I'm still not sure. Do you wish that Carlisle hadn't saved you? No, I don't wish that. He paused before continuing. But my life was over. I wasn't giving anything up. Like, because, you know. He was going to die. He was dying. Right. You are my life. You're the only thing it would hurt me to lose. I was getting better at this. It was easy to admit how much I needed him. He was calm, though. Decided. I can't do it, Bella. I won't do that to you. Why not? My throat rasped, and the words weren't as loud as I'd mean, weren't as loud as I meant them to be. Don't tell me it's too hard. After today, or I don't tell me it's too cold. <laughs> and hard and hard <laughs> after today or i guess that was a few days ago after that it should be nothing and he glared at me in the pain he asked that's my problem i said i can handle it it's possible to take bravery to the point where it comes and insa becomes insanity it's not an issue three days big deal because she like knows the details now right Edward grimaced again as my words reminded him that I was more informed than he had ever intended me to be. Charlie, he asked curtly, 
Renee, like he's like, what the heck? What about your parents? Right. What would they think? Look, that's not an issue either. I finally muttered, my voice unconvincing as it was when I lied. Renee has always made the choices that work for her. She'd want me to do the same. And Charlie's resilient. He's used to being on his own. I can't take care of them forever. I have my own life to live. Exactly, he snapped, and I won't end it for you. So they're basically arguing. Right. It's not very good. If you're waiting for me to be on my deathbed, I've got news for you. I was just there, she says. (laughs) You're going to recover, he reminded me. No, I said slowly. I'm not. His forehead creased. Of course you are. You may have a scar or two. You're wrong, I insisted. I'm going to die. Really, Bella? He was anxious now. You'll be out of here in a few days. Two a week. Two weeks at most. I glared at him. I meant I may not die now, but I'm going to die sometime. Every minute of the day I get closer, and I'm going to get old. <laughs> She's like, gosh, I'm going to be old, and you're going to be young. Well, yeah. They should wait till she's 18. Yeah? To make her a vampire. (laughs) I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just saying that they should. (laughs) That should be a rule. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Is that crazy? No, I guess not. And he's like, well, that's supposed to happen. Like, you're supposed to get old, right? And she... And... He's like, like, I should I should be the one not existing. She says, that's stupid. That's like someone going to someone who's just won the lottery, taking their money and saying, look, let's just go back to the way things should be. It's better that way. And I'm not buying it. I'm hardly a lottery prize. He growled. <laughs> He's like, I didn't like I'm not a lot. I'm not Ed- the lottery. The Edward millions. <laughs> she said, that's right. You're much better. He rolled his eyes and set his lips. Bella, we're not having this discussion anymore. I refuse to damn you to an eternity of night, and that's the end of it. If you think that's the end, then you don't know me very well, I warned him. You're not the only vampire I know. His eyes went black again. Alice wouldn't dare. And for a moment, he looked so frightening that I couldn't help but believe it. I couldn't imagine someone brave enough to cross him. Alice already saw it, didn't she? I guess. That's why the things she says upset you. She knows I'm going to be like you someday. She's she's wrong. She also saw you dead, but that didn't happen either. Boom, roasted her. Got it right back. You'll never catch me betting against Alice, she said. (laughs) This is getting, Bella's getting a little too feisty. I know. She needs to relax. We stared at each other for a very long time. It was quiet except for the whirring of the machines, the beeping, dripping, the ticking of the big clock on the wall. Finally, his expression softened. So where does this leave us, I wondered. He chuckled humorlessly. I believe it's called an impasse. <laughs> I can't say it. An impasse. No, you, you said it. <laughs> I sighed. Ouch, I muttered. How are you feeling? I'm fine, I lied. I don't believe you, he said gently. Well, I'm not going back to sleep. You need rest. So basically, they're just arguing. And he finally pushes the freaking button on the wall <laughs> or on the, the nurse call button. He just mm. pushes it. And she has to, like, give up. He's like, well, you're in so much pain. You just need to relax now. She's she, he's, he's like trying to drug her. Yeah. He's and like, he's I've like, they're not already. going to put any more needles in you now. She's like, I'm not afraid of the needles. I'm afraid to close my eyes. Then he smiled his crooked smile and took my face between his hands. I told you, I'm not going anywhere. Don't be afraid. As long as it makes you happy, I'll be here. You're talking about forever, you know, I smiled back, ignoring the ache in my cheeks. Oh, you'll get over it. It's just a crush. I shook my head in disbelief. It made me dizzy. I was shocked when Renee swallowed that one. I know you know better. That's the beautiful thing about being human, he told me. Things change. My eyes narrowed. Don't hold your breath. He was laughing when the nurse came in, brandishing a syringe. Excuse me, she said to Edward. <laughs> like She was like, excuse me, get out of the way, because yeah. he was on the bed with her. Come on, dude. Um, Trying to diminish some medicine here. And she does it, and she's like, That's a- that ought to do it. And he, she says, stay. The word was slurred. I will. His voice was beautiful, like a lullaby. Like I said, as long as it makes you happy... As long as it's what's best for you. It's not the same thing, I mumbled. He laughed. Don't worry about that now, Bella. You can argue with me when you wake up. 
I think I smiled. K. K. I could feel his lips at my ear. I love you, he whispered. Me too. I know, he laughed quietly. I turned my head slightly, searching. He knew what I was after. His lips touched mine d- gently. Thanks, I sighed. Any time. I wasn't really there at all anymore, but I fought against the stupor weakly. There was just one more thing I wanted to tell him. Edward, I struggled to pronounce his name clearly. Yes, I'm betting on Alice, I mumbled, and then the night closed over me. And that's the end of the chapter. And that's the end of the chapter. So wait, is that the last chapter? There's a, the epilogue and that's it. Okay, so that's the official last chapter. That's the official last chapter is the epilogue. Okay, so... And it's a long, it's a long epilogue. So, uh, that being said, that is the last uh How do you feel? Chapter. How do you feel about all that? Um, it's intense. I, it's I th- a lot. I think they're setting up what's going to be the... uh The next book? the uh or the next part of no like the what the problem i can't think of a better word the the conflict of the next book is gonna be yeah what do you think which is she's gonna want to be a vampire and he's gonna be like no and then maybe because he's like no she kind of like hey jacob black what's going on buddy (laughs) oh yeah you think so hey jacob black hey hey pal what you what you up to what's what's up (laughs) my boyfriend don't want me to be a vampire so i'm gonna make him jealous by hanging out with a you think she's that mean? I think she's a 17-year-old girl. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. It Hi, could be crazy. Man. It could be crazy. Uh, it's so yeah. going to be nuts. Yeah. So here's the plan. Uh, What day What day is that, Tara? March, Thursday, March 11th, I think. Yes, that is correct. Thursday, March 11th. So Thursday, March 11th. Sorry that you guys don't have anything to listen to next week because you listen to it here. But well, also, they can listen to it again if they want. Congrats, because you heard it early. <laughs> um, and by next, I mean Thursday, March 11th. We will, we be, will doing be doing the epilogue. The epilogue. I think we might do the epilogue on Twitch still. I think so, the too. The way we're doing this. And then we will, after that, we will get off Twitch and we will watch <laughs> the first Twilight movie on Discord. So if you're not a member of Discord for some reason, which I think all of you that are here are... Uh, Please join the Discord. Congratulations on finishing the first book, Mindset Blog. Thanks, Thank Mango. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yo, March 11th, I'm on spring break. Oh, hell, hell yeah. Jip. Hell yeah. Let's fucking go. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that blog on here, and then we'll switch to Discord. Thank you, Corn, for the Discord link. And we are going to... I'll set up a channel for it. We'll watch Twilight together. It will be glorious. It'll be like a watch-along channel underneath the Twilight. Yes, so. yes, 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 yes. TBT, yes. I should say. Yes, and then uh, we'll take a couple weeks break of CBT. Yes. But we will come back strong AF. I know. I don't know when we'll do that because you start doing your busy work right at the beginning of April. But It might be three weeks. I don't know. We'll, it I, might be a couple. We'll figure out a date. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Well, We um, might record a bunch before. Something. Right. We might record like four or five chapters ahead of time just to get which will there. be freaking nuts yeah just saying so uh yeah that's exciting I, i'm gonna say like this next book it just hits the ground running the, i i can't imagine it wouldn't at this so point. yeah uh but that's exciting so i might be in labor no big deal it's yeah i mean what better to listen to while you're in labor than the cbt on, podcast born on may 5th specifically you might be in labor giving birth to your baby that will be born on my birthday yes um so yeah That'll be hype. (laughs) That will be hype. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging out. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this This was a lot of fun. I didn't know how this was going to go exactly, but... uh, It was a lot of me just reading as always. Well, right, but it's... It's a podcast. Podcast. It's a podcast, OJ. That is absolutely 100% correct. Uh, Tara, thank you for coaching me today. You're welcome. And we will see you guys next week.